up y'all welcome back to the vlog it's valerie and i am back with the recap for the shy season three episode six happy sunday y'all i am happy to be here i'm going somewhere as you can probably tell because i'm dressed yes she got up and got dressed so i'm gonna do this recap i'm gonna put in this work right quick um, which is about to be easy because this episode was wonderful. Like, I really liked this episode. It had me happy at times. It had my emotions on a roller coaster. I was nervous at times, sad at some times. I was happy at some times. I really felt the energy of the characters and where they were coming from at some of the times in this um, episode. And I know y'all did too. I know y'all really liked this episode. The season is really beginning to take off right as it's ending. So um, I really hope that there will be a, see, a next season of The Shy. Although the season, um, The Shy has not been, there. it hasn't been confirmed that there will be another season. There has been rumors that this is the only season uh, left for the shy that this is it but i'm pretty sure if the ratings are good um why not bring it back but yes y'all let's get right into it in this episode keisha is still alive but has not been found unfortunately y'all unfortunately she has not been found however we are still um aware that she's alive and that's a good thing we also have Emmett and Tiff in this seat, in this episode, and they still have their rocky relationship going on. We've got Rosalind and Otis and Duda. Oh, we actually get to see Duda's mother. So if y'all watch, uh, read the description of this episode, it says Duda Otis runs into some issues with his campaign. He runs into some adversity with the campaign, and that happens to be, the adversity happens to be Camille. She actually is in this episode. Um, in some way and also happens to be oh uh duda's mom yes y'all we're gonna get into that part we've got uh papa papa and maisha in this episode and um we're gonna get into that what else we got we got jake we got trig back in this episode y'all let's get into it let's get into it okay let's start with keisha okay uh in the beginning of the episode we see keisha she's still locked in this guy's basement Y'all, did y'all know it was a basement? I mean, I knew that it was a basement, but when she tried to escape on the last episode, I kind of thought that maybe it might be a house, uh, uh, a building maybe. I thought maybe it was the men's shelter. I was like, maybe it's the men's shelter. Because it really, um, her kicking out that one door in the basement and then running up the stairs to another door, I was like, hmm, maybe uh, it might be the men's shelter. He might be holding her in a public place you know but as it turns out he is actually holding her in the basement of his home and what's funny is when i was looking at his home i said oh yeah that's a place in chicago because i like to look when i'm watching shows of course we know this is in chicago it's called the shy but shows that don't always say where it's filmed and they just start filming there i always like to guess because i i have done a, some traveling i've been around some places i haven't been everywhere but i've been some places so i kind of um can look at movies and tell where it's been filmed just by the houses like even in the states you know if it's filmed down south like florida you know it, it or somewhere in louisiana those houses don't normally have basements so you'll see that those houses are kind of very low to the ground they don't a lot of them the majority of time don't have basements because of the water and things like that the sand the ground and things like that not the sand but the dirt and everything is really soft you can't really hold uh basements it's not made to have basements whereas a house up north a lot of houses up north do have basements so um yeah when i seen that house i was like that looks just like chicago but anyway, uh, in the beginning of the episode, Keisha is thinking about her brother because Kevin is having his birthday. His birthday is coming up. And remember that um, when the there was a precap of the a precap a preview of the um, Keisha of that of that scene where Keisha was with her brother, and that's how, what kind of gave me the feeling that Keisha is going to be found alive, like. She's got to be found alive. Like, if Lena kills off her character, um, I'm going to be so hurt. After dragging us out this far, taking us, giving us this much hope, us keep seeing her alive, us keep seeing this guy who doesn't seem really like a killer, 
um if he kills her i would be very surprised i don't think she's gonna end up killed but we see that even in her situation she still has that concern and she yearns to be with her brother okay um she's still selfless selfless when it comes to everything that's going on you know she's held in captivity but she still wants to say happy birthday to her brother she's thinking about her brother at this time and that's why she go she makes even though she tries to escape in this episode again this is her second time escaping she still tries to cooperate with her uh the person who has her captive the guy that has her captive she still tries to cooperate with him in order to get him to let her make that phone call that she made to her brother which could be very important i know that the phone call said block caller but even a black collar can still be traced, okay? It can still, I'm sure it can still be traced. Anything can happen on TV. They can figure it out, okay? We can use that. But anyhow, um, she even, yeah, throughout this, she is, uh, we've seen that she still has love and, um, you know, she shows that bond, that strong bond that her and her brother have, which we've seen throughout the entire seasons thus far all the seasons we've seen that her and her brother have a very strong bond okay and we also see in this episode that that guy that's holding keisha is the same guy that put that donation that guy knows everything that guy is probably watching kevin he is the same guy that put the donation in the in the box in the in the donation can at perry's pizza y'all remember that he put that donation in there. That's the same guy. And I told y'all he was an older guy. I was like, I could tell by the tone of his voice that he's an older male. Um, we get to a good look at him this time. He definitely is an older male. He's definitely somebody from around the community. And he's definitely somebody that had been watching her. He had been stalking her. Y'all heard what he said? I told y'all he had been stalking her. I said, y'all, look, did y'all see that he had some trophies and some track clothes and he had been watching her. He was praying on her. He was basically praying on her. The guy is a creep. Do, um, he's a creep all the way around. Even with his OCD. Like, he's very clean. You know, he says that he's saving her from what he believes will destroy her. Okay? So, when he says that, it's like, you already know he's a major creep. Something ain't right with him. Who, who are you to determine that she needs to be saving, you know? He says, oh, I, um, he references about another girl that he was trying to get to, but he couldn't save her on time, and she ended up getting pregnant, and now she all out of shape on welfare. And it sounds like that's where Keisha was kind of headed, because in the beginning of the season, y'all remember Keisha was speaking with Emmett, and she told Emmett that she didn't really have a desire to go to college anymore she she wasn't really interested in attending college she thought maybe you know what what if she doesn't want to do that what if she wants to be a bum what if she wants to well not a bum but what if she doesn't want that much out of her life you know so that's what she was telling Emmett and um the guy that has her captive we still haven't gotten a name for him he um actually seen that and he decided to do something about it so y'all let's get in this is a long episode i'm i'm probably gonna have to break this recap up into different um i'm gonna have to break it up y'all because otherwise it's gonna be like a 45 minute long or 50 hour long video to get all the commentary out so yeah that's what's going on with keisha and it's crazy um and as you can see, the guy can really be handled. The guy can be handled because Keisha finessed him into letting her make a phone call. In the last episode, Keisha didn't have on handcuffs. The handcuffs were there, but they weren't on her. She was able to go use the restroom. Although the cameras and the motion sensors, motion sensor cameras were on her, he was still watching her every move. He he didn't have her cuffed anymore so i believe that he may have had her cuffed in the beginning and then she earned a little bit of his trust and he uncuffed her now in this episode she is back in cuffs however 
she does finesse him into letting her make that phone call to Kevin. So we see that he can be handled. Even though she tried to escape two times, he still let her make that phone call, y'all. Uh, let's see what else we're going to talk about uh, in this okay so that's gonna be it for this video um this video is just basically an update on keisha her whereabouts her uh the guy that has her captive his whereabouts make sure y'all like comment subscribe get ready for the next episode the next episode we're gonna get into Roslyn. we're gonna get into otis perry duda and all the good drama y'all make sure you stay tuned thank you so much for supporting me supporting the channel if you like what you see make sure you give a like comment subscribe did i say that already did you do it Make sure you leave a comment. Make sure y'all say something when you come in here. <laughs> All right, y'all. It's been real. Thank you so much for watching. Y'all take it easy. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.